Hello everybody, this is Lara with an extra video update this week for you with an analysis of Ethereum. I'm going to follow the same format for this analysis that I do every week for every other market I analyse for my membership, which is Bitcoin, the S&P 500, gold and US oil. Both my Elliott Wave counts expect that the low of the 22nd of June this year to not be breached. The main Elliott Wave count expects a triangle to continue sideways for a few months before the next bull run for Ethereum begins, and an alternate expects the next bull run is in its early stages. Uh, there is really not much difference between the two, and as we go through the Elliott Wave charts, I'll show you why I'm going to label the main wave count the main wave count, and it's a fairly shallow reason. So the probability of both of those scenarios is about even. I'm going to look at the full price history of Ethereum and I'm starting my Elliott Wave count in, I think this is October 2015. From this low to this high, this upward movement subdivides beautifully as a five wave impulse meeting all Elliott Wave rules. I'm labelling it cycle wave one and it subdivides one degree lower at primary degree, primary one, two, three, four, five. There's alternation between double zigzag for primary two and a regular contracting triangle for primary four. I've noted wavelengths on this chart so I can have an idea of Ethereum's price history and how its third and fifth waves behave in relation to previous actionary waves. Here primary wave three is 19.36 times the length of primary wave 1 and primary wave 5 is 2.79 times the length of primary wave 3. It looks shorter but that's because this is a semi-log scale, not an arithmetic scale. In terms of price distance travelled, this is how long primary 5 is to primary wave 1. So I'll expect similar relationships, not exactly the same, but I'd expect a similar kind of relationship within cycle wave 3 and I would expect cycle wave 3 to be longer than cycle wave 1 and so my target for cycle 3 is for it to reach 11.09 times the length of cycle wave 1. This is a Fibonacci ratio, it's a very extreme ratio but if this target is wrong it may not be high enough because within cycle wave 1 primary 3 is 19.36 times the length of primary wave 1. If cycle wave 3 exhibits a similar relationship to the length of cycle 1 then this target would not be high enough but for now I'm going to use Fibonacci ratios. Within cycle wave 3 primary 1 and 2 may be complete, primary 2 a very deep zigzag, primary 3 may be complete. Now my main wave count is going to label primary 3 for Ethereum complete because if it was over here it's 15.27 times the length of primary wave 1 and that's not too far off the length of primary 3 to 1 within cycle 1 and also not too far off the length of intermediate 3 to 1 within primary 3 that was 18.24 and so this would be within a reasonably acceptable range considering Ethereum's price history that's really the only reason why my main wave count will label primary 3 over here if primary 4 is continuing, it may be continuing as a triangle, although it could morph into a combination, and because of that I have to technically leave the invalidation point on the monthly chart down here. Primary 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory below 361.3987, however it shouldn't get anywhere near that point if it were to be particularly deep. I'd expect it to find pretty strong support at the lower edge of this channel. And looking back at the price history here, the fourth wave here is well above first wave price territory. Likewise, within primary three, intermediate four remained well above intermediate wave one price history, sorry, territory. And primary four, the lowest point of it, intermediate A, remained way above primary wave one price territory. I would expect primary four probably has its low in place down here. If we do see a low below this point, I would not expect it to be by much. Let's take a look at the weekly chart and the weekly chart will start from this point here, the end of cycle 2 and the start of cycle 3. This point down here, cycle 3 may only subdivide as an Elliott wave impulse that will be labelled at primary degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
This main wave count considers primary 3 over at the last high for Ethereum and primary 4 continuing sideways as a triangle. That would see primary 4 exhibit alternation with the zigzag of primary 2. Primary 2 lasted 37 weeks. I'd expect primary 4, if it's a triangle, to be longer lasting than primary 2 because primary 2 was a zigzag. If primary 4 is a triangle, they tend to be longer lasting structures than zigzags. It's only, I think, 19 weeks so far through, so about half the duration of primary two and if it's going to be longer than primary two I'd expect it to be only about a third of the way through and so it should ex it would be expected for this wave count to see sideways movement in an ever decreasing range for many weeks yet and actually for months yet. The target here for cycle three is again the same as on the monthly chart. Let's take a look at the daily chart with this low here for intermediate A is this point down here. Four of the five subwaves of an Elliott wave triangle must subdivide into zigzag or multiple zigzags with only one of the five subwaves allowed to subdivide as a multiple zigzag. The most, co the most common subwave to do that is wave C and so intermediate C would reasonably be expected to be fairly likely, not certain, just fairly likely to subdivide is a multiple zigzag, that's why I'm labelling it W, X, Y. Within a multiple zigzag X, there's actually no rule for where X may or may not end up, but it doesn't usually move beyond the start of wave W. So if we see a new high above this point, I will probably discard this wave count in favour of the alternate, which at this point I consider to have a fairly close to even probability for Ethereum. And so this wave count expects a big downward swing for intermediate C to end at this trend line, then a big upward swing for D, and a smaller downward swing for E. Elliott wave triangles commonly adhere very, very well to their trend lines, and it's common to see a test within a triangle subwave of the trend lines. This low for minor B within intermediate B may be a test of the AC trend line, which shows us where the AC trend line should be drawn, because we may have the minimum required two, actually almost three, anchor points along which to draw the trend line. And so rather than a price point for intermediate C, I'm going to use this trend line for you, and it will change as time goes on, obviously, because it has somewhat of a slope. Not a very big one, but it is sloped. At the weekly chart level, what if we move the degree of labelling within primary 3 down 1 degree? This could be the end of intermediate 1 within primary 3. Primary 3 may not be over. This is a very bullish wave count and is in alignment with my main Elliott wave count for Bitcoin. When we get to classic technical analysis, I'll explain why I've got them swapped over for Ethereum. Not there yet. This is entirely possible. It would expect primary 3 when it's over though to be a lot longer than primary 3 and the intermediate degree third waves within cycle wave 1 but in Bitcoin's price history were to their counterpart first waves. And so that's pretty much the reason why this is an alternate. But I judge it from classic technical analysis terms to have a fairly close to even probability. Primary 3 may only subdivide as an impulse within it. It'll be labelled intermediate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Within intermediate 3, which may only subdivide as an impulse, that 2 will be labelled at minor degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, below 1707.6006. Let's take a look at the daily chart now, where the low for intermediate 2 is this point down here. Now looking at minor wave one, it looks like a really good five wave impulse. One, two, three, four, five, a deep zigzag for two, a running contracting triangle for four, beautiful alternation there. All the subdivisions fit really well. Minor wave two fits very well as a zigzag, A, B, C. A and C are very close to even in, in length. I think C is just over $36 longer than A, which is just under 4% of the length of C. I consider a variation under 10% to be close enough to say the waves exhibit a Fibonacci ratio. That's just a value judgment that I've made when I assess wavelengths to see if they are exhibiting Fibonacci ratios. And these are close enough to say they exhibit a ratio of equality, which is the most common situation between A and C waves. 
For this wave count, I'm going to expect minor two is over. There's a strong bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. And I'm going to expect that minor three within intermediate three, within primary three, within cycle three is in its very, very early stages, just in the first two days of upward movement. This is an extremely bullish wave count. Within minor three, no second wave correction may move beyond its start below 2676.4077. Let's take a look at classic technical analysis now, and I will show you why. I am not going to have my main Elliott wave count for Ethereum the same as Bitcoin. This is why I'm looking at the correlation coefficient between Ethereum and Bitcoin. Now, while these two markets do most commonly exhibit a fairly strong positive correlation, the history of the two markets with the correlation coefficient absolutely shows that that's not always the case. A correlation can break down. And so we can't assume that just because right now they have a strong positive correlation, a very strong one with the correlation coefficient at 0 0.96, we have to understand and accept that it could break down at any time, which means that in terms of Elliott Wave analysis, these two markets should both be approached separately and in isolation from each other, and then we use classic analysis to determine the probability of the Elliott Wave counts. That's what I'm trying to do here, and that's why because I do expect people are going to ask me why. And I'm also anticipating that people are going to complain that my wave counts aren't the same. Okay, fine, you can complain, but it won't get you anywhere. This is, it is what it is. Okay, at this high here for Ethereum, we notice on the weekly chart that RSI can reach deeply overbought. This is really common for cryptocurrencies. ADX also reaches fairly extreme. It got to above 60. This is not as extreme as some of the smaller cryptocurrencies which exhibit even stronger exponential growth. Ethereum's a little bit more moderate, although to be honest there's really nothing moderate about this market at all. It's very extreme. And so after a very extreme upward trend, bearish divergence between RSI, it's unsurprising there was some pullback. This pullback, again, this is a logarithmic scale. So the depth of this movement in terms of price distance travelled isn't really shown clearly on a logarithmic chart, but we do need to view these cryptocurrencies on log charts. That's the correct way to view markets which exhibit exponential growth. But this is a strong or a rather deep pullback in terms of price distance, distance travelled, and so this is probably enough now to resolve this extreme upward trend and the bearish divergence at the high. At this low here, I should have noted it on this chart, there is a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern and it does have support from volume on the weekly chart. So there's a little bit more support for the view that we have a sustainable low in place. And there's strong support repeatedly tested at this point. Every time support is tested, it strengthens it. So we can expect there's pretty strong support down here just below or just about 1700. Next resistance above from the prior all time high about 4380. On balance volume is interesting at the weekly chart level. Watch it in coming weeks really carefully for a breakout. Above resistance would be bullish, below support would be bearish. ADX is declining at the weekly chart level, indicating no clear trend at this time. RSI well back into neutral territory, plenty of room for a new trend to develop, and stochastics just in neutral. ATR increases as price moves higher, that's bullish for that bull run, which was very bullish. Here it is at the daily chart level. There was a fairly strong bearish, bearish divergence between price and RSI. At the daily chart level, the upward trend at its end was extreme, but not very extreme. Previously, it had reached very extreme at this time frame. At this low here, two days ago, we see a strong bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. It doesn't have support from volume though. We saw it back down here, and that didn't have support from volume, yet it led to new all-time highs for Ethereum. This market doesn't always exhibit strength in terms of volume off lows, but it does exhibit strong bullish candlestick patterns. And here's another one, a morning star. There's another bullish engulfing candlestick pattern here which didn't exhibit support from volume compared to previous candlesticks, that is, which you can't see now, it's just off to the left of the chart. Let's expect support now about 2900. 
The moving average situation is bullish but not fully so. The short is negatively sloped but it's above the mid which is above the long and remained above the long. It came down to kiss the long but it didn't cross in a death cross. And so price is above the long. The mid and long of a positively slope. This is bullish but not yet a full bore bullish look but it won't take much to move this into a full bore bullish look. That would happen if the short term average trend has a positive slope and price moves above all of them and then that would be full bore bullish. That could happen if price continues higher in another couple of days. The last signal here from on balance volume was bearish but it's quite weak. This line may offer a little bit of resistance now after breaking below support but this break weakens the technical significance of it. So a signal here isn't really going to tell us much. Watch bond balance volume at the weekly chart level for Ethereum in the next few weeks. Watch that one closely. Not so much here. ADX still indicates a downward trend. It is a lagging indicator based here on a 14 day average. RSI didn't reach oversold at this low. It doesn't always get there. It gets really extreme for bullish trends but not as extreme and doesn't and often won't even reach oversold at the end of a bearish trend. But it did get well below 50. It got kind of close but it didn't get to oversold. That's okay. Stochastics did. No divergence though here. That's okay. Doesn't have to show it. But stochastics did reach oversold. It can remain there for a little while, but when there's a bullish trend for Ethereum, it can remain overbought for quite a long period of time. And ATR slightly increases as price moves lower. That's fairly normal for this market. That's all for me with your Ethereum analysis, an extra analysis for you this week, and I hope everyone's having a fabulous day. <music>